what's going on guys this is matt and today we're going to be brewing a cream ale uh, if you're interested in grain to glass content make sure to subscribe to my channel and like the video we are also going to be live streaming this brew day so uh, if you haven't already check out the youtube channel and go to the stream archive section on the bottom you should be able to watch this live stream from start to finish if you're interested in seeing the brew day but anyway we got the strike water heating up I want to go over the Beersmith 3 notes and then we will jump right into the brew day. Now to go over the Beersmith 3 recipe. Uh, for the malt bill, it's going to be very simple. It's going to be just pale malt two row, flaked corn, acid malt, and carapils for head retention. Uh, you'll notice that the flaked corn is going to be around 10% of the bill while the pale malt is going to be around 71%. For our fermentables, we're also adding some corn sugar as well. That will be around 9% of the entire bill for fermentables. For the hot profile, we are going to be using Saz and Hallatower. Um, both of these will provide a herbal and woody note. Uh, this beer isn't really supposed to be all that bitter, as you see on the bottom. It's only around 18 IBUs, which is actually pretty high for this style. Um, so both of these have very low alpha acid. Uh, we're going to be using distilled water and building up a profile from there and we are also using flagship from imperial for the starter information uh, the only requirement is 127 billion yeast cells and i'm using imperial yeast so that's not a problem i will not be doing a starter for this batch for the water profile um, it's going to be relatively balanced with a little bit towards a lean towards the chloride as we don't really want this to be bitter or dry, we kind of want this to be on the sweeter, softer side on the mouthfeel, so we're going with the higher chloride. Now to jump into the brew day. We start off the brew day by starting to heat up our strike water and then we mill our grains to a fine crush. Next we need to adjust our distilled water by adding 2.85 grams of canning salt, 1.92 grams of Epsom salt, 1.11 grams of gypsum, 0.87 grams of baking soda, 0.65 grams of calcium chloride, and 0.25 grams of calcium carbonate. After our salts have been dissolved, we dough in. After doughing, we stir up the mash to break up any dough balls. After around 15 minutes into the mash, we collect a sample. This is how I chill my pH samples down, as you don't want to put the pH sensor in very hot wort. The pH measures at around 5.3, which is acceptable. After a 15 minute mash and a 10 minute mash out, we raise the grain basket out of the system and then we press our grains to extract as much wort as we can. After cooling the sample to around 85 degrees, we measure at around 1032, so pre-boil gravity measures out to around 1035, which is under target by 7 points. We will be adding a little bit more corn sugar than we planned. After we hit our boiling, we add 0.4 ounces of hollow tower for 60 minutes. Then with 30 minutes remaining, we add 1 ounce of saws. In the last 10 minutes of the boil, we add 11 ounces of corn sugar. We probably should have added more than just an extra ounce, but I did not calculate how much I was supposed to add for the seven point adjustment. With around five minutes left of the boil, I ran boiling wort through the pumps, line, and chiller to sanitize the equipment. After the five minutes is up and the boil is completed, we turn on the cold water to the plate chiller and start rapidly chilling the wort. After we aerate the beer, we pitched our flagship from Imperial. After a two-week fermentation, we get our keg ready by filling the keg up with star sand and CO2, and then we push the remaining star sand out of the keg with CO2, purging the keg of oxygen. Once the keg is full of CO2, we start our low oxygen transfer from the fermenter to the keg. We forgot to take a final gravity reading, but this should have measured out to at around 10.08, which should put us at around 4.5%. Okay guys, so this is the end of the video where I talk about the brew day notes, and then I go over the uh, flavor, aroma, mouthfeel, uh, et cetera, for the cream ale. Uh, a few things about the brew day. So we did live stream this brew day, um, and this is only the third live stream I've done and every single time I've done a live stream We've gotten more and more viewers, which has been great 
Um, the channel has been growing slowly but surely. Uh, this recent brew day, we actually had a decent amount of chatter, so it was actually very uh, fun. And, uh, and as I see more people come into the live streams, it definitely encourages me to stream more brew days in the future. So you might see a few more streams uh, next year as well. Um, another thing too is this is the, uh, I want to mention that this is the first cream ale I've, I've ever brewed before. Um, again, I, I usually in the past, I've kind of brewed like three or four of the same beers over and over and over again. Uh, this YouTube channel has really encouraged me to try different styles out. And uh, with this cream ale, it's the first time I've actually brewed one. Um, so, and I, I've really been enjoying it thus far as well. Um, I only went with around 10% on the flaked corn. I, I think with this style you can go all the way up to 20%. So it's probably a little bit light on the corn. Uh, but anyway, I thought it turned out pretty good. Um, the only other thing I want to mention is we were off by 7 points on Brew Day. Which, if you know, for, if you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that that's, that's not very surprising. Um, we didn't double crush the grains though, and moving from this point on, we're gonna be double crushing all the grains, and hopefully that's gonna help with the efficiency issues. Um, I'm really running out of ideas. The only other thing I can think of is maybe we sparge, um, but I'm trying to stay away from that as long as I can because obviously that's just an additional step on brew day that I wanna try to avoid. But yeah, uh, for the uh, aroma, mouthfeel, flavor, Etc. We're gonna jump right into that. Um, so for the appearance, it's definitely I don't know if you can tell, but it is a it is a straw color, a straw golden color. Um, it is not very clear, um, and I'd say that's probably the biggest problem with this uh, this beer that I brewed is a cream ale is supposed to be very very clear, and this did not turn out very clear. Um, I believe we used fining in this. I believe we used Warflock tablets. Um, I probably, and this is also cold crashed as well. Um, it's really cloudy right now. I don't know why it's so cloudy right now. Uh, when I was drinking this yesterday, it was actually relatively clear. Um, so I'm not really sure what happened here, but <laughs> it, it seems to be a lot more cloudier than it typically is. But uh, take my word for it that it was a little bit uh, less cloudy than it was, uh, that it is just now. Um, as, as far as as far as the, uh, the head goes, it has a pretty good head retention and it is a white head as well. Uh, we can go into the aroma next. Um, yeah, so it, it definitely has that corn, the sweet corn aroma that is typical in cream ales. Uh, so it definitely has that aroma. It also has some like slight herbal hop notes as well. And I'd say the overall malt aroma is relatively low as well. But that's really all I'm picking up from this. There's not a lot to this beer. The bill's pretty simple. The hops are pretty simple as well. But that's all I'm really getting from the aroma. Um, next we can go into mouthfeel. So it definitely has a soft and smooth mouthfeel. And I wanna say probably contributing to that is the water chemistry as well. I think we went heavier on the chloride, so that should help uh, make this kind of a softer mouthfeel. Yeah, it's definitely medium and light. And it also has this thir thirst quenching quality as well. Um, adjunct heavy beers typically uh, have that quality to them. And this is adjunct heavy as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really, really pleasant to drink. Uh, lastly, we can go into flavor. So for bitterness, it's really low, <laughs> really, really, really low, which is by design. Uh, I want to say, I think this is like under 20 IBUs. Uh, so you're not really getting m much perceivable bitterness. Also, like I said, with the water chemistry, the gypsum is really low in this compared to the chlorides. Um, so you're not going to really get that dry quality that you get from adding gypsum. It definitely has a moderate malt sweetness and it does have a corny flavor to it. Not like like really really corny, but it has like a it has like a mild like a sweet corn flavor as well, uh, which I would expect from the style to have as well. I would say on the finish, yeah, it just finishes soft and sweet. Um, that's really all I can talk about it. I mean, it's a, it's just a cream ale. I always tell people it's a lawnmower beer because <laughs> that's what I think it is. Uh, but anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching this far. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and comment down below uh, if you want to chat about this beer at all. 
Um, but anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.